because that's what the state health code standard is, and we have to make sure that businesses aren't going against health code standards. So health code standards are priority. They take precedent over you know, our recommendations of the environmental best practices. We don't want anybody to get fined. We don't want people to get in trouble. Um, but when there's a lot of areas where businesses have opportunity to meet health code standards, but improve in other areas. And so we, we focus on those other areas of opportunity for improvement. For your instance, for your example with uh, the high, the, we call it uh, low flow spray nozzles, uh, they're high pressure. But as long as you have that high pressure, you can still scrape off like I don't have that. I have a bathroom sink. Oh, okay. I, yeah. live, I live upstairs. We have one sink. It's a bathroom sink. And yeah. When they just did our uh, recent upgrade, they put low flow, non local fixtures on them. And now we get half, so half the water pressure from uh, okay. yeah. the sink. And it takes almost twice as much water to wash dishes down. I could take a look at it. Yeah. I could power it. Are you happy to take a look at it? I mean, we have, um, so there's different flow standards, right? And you wouldn't want to put like a bathroom sink aerator on a kitchen sink because they're a lot lower. It's a 0.5 versus like a 1.5 gallon flow rate. Um, but if you keep the 1.5 on a kitchen sink, it should be enough because the way the 1.5 works too is it disperses the water a lot better so that it keeps that air, it keeps that same pressure and it covers the larger surface area. Um, so yeah, a lot of I mean that's what I use at home and it's uh, and it swivels and you can kind of change the pressure rate. Um, but if, if not if nothing else, I could definitely send you an aerator um, that's easy to replace. All you need is a wrench to do it. I rather not touch it. I break it back. <laughs> uh, um, if you've got like baked, baked on or you know burnt uh, steel pans where there's a coating on the bottom, the best thing to do is to put water and baking soda and boil it, yeah. and it lifts it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I you mean, have a recommendation guide of just like uh -huh. cleaning products that you can make with just like baking soda, vinegar. Uh -huh. uh, we're a big proponent of microfiber cloths. Like, if you just use a microfiber cloth and water on a hard surface, it removes 99% of germs. Uh -huh. And, I mean, a lot of times, there's a lot of chemical overuse, and like, a lot of businesses we work with have, mm -hmm. you know, 17, 18, 25, 30 plus very specific chemical products. And when you mix them all together, you're kind of making like this chemical cocktail. And oftentimes we can get janitorial service companies to just reduce their number of products to maybe five, six, or seven. And for a lot of businesses that work in offices, it might even be fewer than that. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, and the main thing is when you when you mix things together, then you inhale them. Right. You know, I mean, it's like you no, know, no, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like one of the policies our team is working on right now is focused on chemical flame retardants, uh -huh. which um, up until 2015 was basically required in all upholstery furniture. Mm -hmm. So couches, um, beds, I mean, you even see it in a lot of childhood These products. These chairs that are now cracking? Exactly, yeah. So that into that. yeah. Exactly, yeah. They have good ventilation. They do, that's important. Um, and there's certain things, certain simple things you can do, just like washing your hands regularly, because um, the dust particles in the air is the way that it gets into your digestion system. But um, yeah, there's our, our our department's working with the supervisor to actually introduce a, an ordinance that would basically ban these brominated flame retardants. Um, the fire department really supports our policies because the rates of cancer that are happening. And the firefighters in San Francisco yes. are super, I mean, they're like five times higher than the normal rate of, of cancer. Um, so yeah, there's there's some public support that we're getting for trying to get rid of these chemical flame retardants. The, the hard part is trying to face the chemical industry, which um, 
has really obviously a strong larvae arm and interest in heating these large amounts of chemicals inside. I, in a two seat, in a two seater sofa, you have four pounds of chemical flame retardants in the foam. And really the area where the danger is like the most prevalent is like kind of on the fabric. Once the fabric catches, even if the foam itself is soaked in chemical flame retardants, the, that long of exposure of, of a flame, anything's gonna catch catch fire. So the important part is like you're trying to really focus on fire safety. It's just really just on the exterior and having the exterior materials not be flammable, but the chemical industry is really interested in the, yeah. their products. Here's a card, I've got uh, my two social workers on the back. If you give them a call, you can get uh, that book of information on uh, cleaners that are not chemical based, mm -hmm. uh, to eventually distribute throughout the building. Absolutely. Because we have both Chinese, Filipino, uh, a couple Russians, yeah, I, on the negative side, I would, I would have to back up more of this we, the sinks in these SROs get a lot of use. Yeah. Because people are doing a bit of, they're generally doing a bit of cooking in their rooms. Mm -hmm. And so when you put that little flow fixture on there, it really makes it a lot harder. I did, yeah, I can see the concern for the, I, I'd be happy to take a look at the sink, but I'd see the concern for the 0.5 gallon per minute flow rates, which are a lot lower. But the, the ones that are 1.5, I feel like are have a good distribution of water and good good pressure rate. But like it's something that you can definitely like try out, and then if it's not something that works, it's it's easy to remove. If it's just a, we do have some share kitchens next door. And yeah, the sinks are just so much bigger in the kitchen. Everything yeah. is so much better suited for washing. Right. About the two, can you say something about two and a half gallons that you're going to aerate and get it down to? What was that? So, yeah, the standard flow rate from uh, the federal standard. Oh, well, that's the little sinks going down to half, half a gallon per minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's a pretty considerable water saving. Yeah, sometimes when they do. Um, efficiency kind of things in these hotels, we, we kind of get hammered a little bit harder than, than other people do. Right. And, and our usage consumption rate is pretty much everything is way low to begin with. Right. Yeah, I short mean, yeah. showers are the answer. What's that? Sure. Yeah, I went to all girls school. We had a shower in a minute and a half. <laughs> so they were getting ready to put shower timers in my building and they just stopped and I think they, they made them illegal, is that sound right? The Board of Supervisors, I believe they passed some. Oh, for oh, you shower mean timers? They, yeah. You mean that they would cut off? Oh, in other words, if you were... Ten minutes, but still. Oh, I don't exactly know how they work because they, they just stopped. They got, there's holes in the wall. That's a little bit at yeah, I never go uh, over three uh, minutes. Uh, through, through. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's what I'm trying to You got a group of people who are somewhat challenged in their personal hygiene. Oh, and that, you're yeah. you're dropping extremely, relatively low flow showers on them. Yeah. It's not really that good of an idea. Let them, let them match. <laughs> Encourage. Yeah. Encourage. Yeah. She's right. They, they really are getting to a point. And there's no heating in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. It's cold. Yeah, I get it hot. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. No, no, we seem to get hammered by this stuff. Shower. Yeah. Mine hooked up to my uh, bathtub faucet because they never had anything in the wall in my room. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. And, which I, okay. I much prefer they have. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Although they feel they keep saying, well, we need to change it. I go, no, you don't. You just changed it a year ago. <laughs> I don't need to change it yet. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it is coming up. A lot of these items are mm -hmm. for any new construction. There's the California Building Code, um, which for any new construction is going to require basically what our program standards are for bathroom sinks, kitchen sinks, and um, for shower any new like shower heads. So I mean, like a typical shower head can be anywhere up to like four or five gallons per minute. Um, the 
the EPA water sense shower heads are 2.0 gallons per minute, but they make 1.75. The ones the water department gives out for free is the 1.5, but I gotta say, like, that's, low flush showers are probably like my weak point. <laughs> yeah, I like to I like to have showers with a little bit more water pressure, but the 2.0 ones are, are, I think, really, really comfortable, really nice. Mm -hmm. I got something else, somebody, about these hotels, maybe somebody could be thinking about. If we're going to, we're taking water now from underneath the Richmond Hill there, and we're mixing it into the Hetch Hetchy water, and so supposedly, the quality is dropping, but it's still high quality. Mm -hmm. but for me, I'm, what I'm suggesting is if we're going to lower the quality of the water in the tap, if we could get purified water for drinking, you know, somewhere in a central location, it'll mm -hmm. lock it. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I have a water plastic. filter at my place that can do, 20, was it 25,000 gallons? And can you, yeah. can you like bring a pitcher and fill it up or a gallon jug or something? Well, that's what those are. Oh. See, I, I filtered the yes. water before yeah. I brought it here. It just seems to me there's going to be <laughs> come a point where, and there is in a lot of cities already, where you kind of have to filter the water before you drink it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's, a lot of it has to do with the plumbing. The existing plumbing. I've been doing it for 40 there's years. There's another thing happening. There's more and more people no becoming allergic to water. Uh -huh. so this is why if we got started on modern water yeah, uh, and the family, I mean, because Loretta was actually it, allergic it, there's, to the There's one, water. one that does wow. 25,000 gallons and another one does 35,000. 30,000. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 It lasts about three or four years. And so we started on modern water. When I met her, you know, she you know, it's done when it stops and, working. Uh, I still buy another one. Have water. one in reserve. But do you have one on your sink? Uh, yeah. I drink well, it's it's a countertop. Right. It's a countertop, and it's attached to the Can faucet. Switch it on yeah. And off? yeah. There's a little. And there's and a little toggle like switch. The main thing is never put hot water through it. You got to be conscientious about, you know, you only having that toggle when you got cold water running. From a desert spring. We have the Greta filter pictures. Um, so it's, 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 it's horribly expensive mm. by comparison. Yeah. So it's like I, mean, I paid like 40 bucks, uh, 40 bucks, but it's 40 bucks over right. three or four so, years. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, that's something our department really tries to. Actually, be I get two at once. I, I, I sent mean, one to my daughter. We had someone from the. Um, another another city agency just kind of talked about because our, our our department really like focuses on like environmental initiatives, but really taking you know the considerations of like vulnerable populations like they brought into the account like you know when you ban ban plastic bags, how much of an impact that has like on something like getting groceries mm -hmm. and how much you know more how how difficult it is to carry out. You know, groceries if you're handicapped. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's a convenience factor there for a lot of like recyclable bag. Yeah. Yeah. So make yeah. you know, the bag for you know, should have I, one know. bag my housekeeper was carrying the bag we had and somebody somebody ripped it off his arms because yeah. they wanted the bag. They can care less about the food inside, they wanted the bag. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah, our, our, our department tries to be sensitive about that at the same time, like, you know, having climate change, you know, affect our water levels, our water table, and it, you know, the fact that the Stinson Beach would be gone in just us 30 years, um, I mean, trying to find that, that balance between, like, and, I mean, for this program, for the Green Business Program, like, we really just want to find areas that are going to help businesses, you know, improve their operating costs and then also, you know, help the environment, help employees, health and safety. So it's, 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 there's definitely going to be special instances. That's something that I've learned working on the job for the last, you know, seven years is just, you can't make these rules black and white. There's definitely like, you know, you're working with gray areas, but you know, ultimately, we're just trying to to help people um, and well, help this, the planet. This building, as you can see out there, we have our compost can. Yeah. We compost uh, seven days a week in this building. 
I see you got two minutes. Um, between um, 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. We have recycling cans uh, they, that we have on each floor that they unlock between 9 and 2. Um, so we do try to do things. Uh, we're one of the first TNC buildings to start a team, uh, recycling and composting book. Okay, yeah. And our department works really closely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have a several people from your department been here. Okay. Oh, really? No. We, uh, yeah, we've changed management about three times, so it's everything we get. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and some new items that are going to be accepted in the, the, the recycle stream, which are going to be changes. Uh, the facilities are now going to accept it. Clear plastic film is now going to be accepted into the recycle stream. So if you get a bunch of, or sorry, not clear plastic, any plastic film, if you bundle it together, you can now throw that into the blue bin. Um, the Tetra Pack, so anything that's like, it used to be like those soy milk containers mm -hmm. that are cardboard on the outside but lined with like metal on the inside. That used to go into the trash bin, but now you can throw that into the blue, the blue recycle bin. Um, also, coffee cups uh -huh. used to have to go into the compost, or you'd have to pull it apart. You'd have to kind of dissect yes, it. Yes, yes. The, top the lids go here, and the yeah. paper so goes there. Now yeah. that can all go into the recycle bin. Uh -huh. um, oh, that's rich. I yeah. <laughs> the best thing is a reusable cup. So we got the reusable mm -hmm. box. Um, um, yeah, I think what you can do, because the coal here is our uh, our leader on um, the recycling program in the building. Give her a call. Let her know if there's changes in the plant and the recycling, so she can get this bench up. Okay. Yeah. Do you have uh, her? Oh, okay. Elsa, do you have? Do you know if they had an email contact? I don't know if you know their email on the top of their head, but I can always. I don't know what their oh. email is. Oh. Um, you can always call the TNC office. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I don't have your card. <laughs> I have oh, I have my card. Okay. Well, I, I can, uh, yeah. I can. Oh, hey, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that, that looks environmental. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, uh, do you want me to uh, to turn off the camera now? Uh, yeah, I, I do have a, a land use report to get. Okay. Well, thank you. Well, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Tell Michael I said hello. Land use report is pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, I just got this yesterday and I haven't called on him. I don't. I have a notice of project receiving environmental review 1965 Market Street, 255 291 DeBose Avenue. It's at uh, Market and Guerrero Street. Oh. And it's a um, uh, they want to, the building is currently comprised of two and three story buildings with retail and commercial space. They want to merge them at uh, four to five floors above the building and put in housing. Mm -hmm. That's my name, Curtis. Um, and uh, there's a hearing on August 23rd when the commissioners get back from sitting from vacation for 851 O'Carroll. It's to add f uh, five accessory dwelling units to the ground floor of an existing four-story, 27-unit residential building. Then also on the 23rd at 750 O'Carroll, which is about a block from this project, they want to do the same thing at six accessory dwelling units on the ground floor of an existing four-story, 47 unit with one guest residential unit. Then also on August 23rd, um, on 489 Utah Street, they want to convert an auxiliary structure in a rear yard to an accessory dwelling unit containing, a, a, which is containing a three-story, three-unit residential building. Also on August 23rd, on the front of the zoning administrator, there's a project at 1449 South Van Ness between 25th and 26th, which proposes to reduce 
the area of the existing non-compliant structure garage 